In today's video I'm going to share with you my witchy and spiritual and tarot books so if you are interested to see what is on my shelf then do keep on watching. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all well. If you're new here, my name is Emily and today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my witchy and spiritual books on my bookshelf. Now, you may have seen the first part of this which was my tarot shelf and my tarot and oracle deck collection. Essentially, I'm doing this now because I'm actually moving. I'm packing everything up to move house with my husband and my kids and it felt like a good time a better time than any other to be honest to do this kind of video so I have already packed up my tarot and oracle decks they filled up four large suitcases so that is not a small amount of decks so mm, food for thought anyway the books are still there so I will say that whilst this video I'm going to share the books with you it's not going to be like really aesthetic and really beautiful like I would like this video to be because you know I think that if I was waiting for it to be like that then I'd be waiting for a long long time because we're about to move and I think it takes you know several months to get settled and then even then you're moving things around etc so I really really think this way is just a nice way to share what books are on my shelf right now as of September 2021 and you know what I've been reading what I've been enjoying over the last few years and if you're interested in witchcraft spirituality tarot magic the occult then I'm sure that there are some books here that are going to interest you so if you would like to see what is on my bookshelf then do keep on watching so as I said this isn't going to be like really aesthetic because everything is kind of higgledy piggledy at the moment because I've already been unpacking all the tarot and oracle decks so I'm just going to share with you what is on the shelf at the moment and it doesn't look perfect it doesn't look brilliant so please forgive me that so up the top, this shelf had lots of tarot and oracle on it, and these are books that have been at the bottom of the bookshelf that didn't really have a place. So I've just popped them there for now. These things were sort of at the top of the bookcase before, sort of just decorative items. These are some of the pens that I use for journaling and stuff, and some pencils, and a candle, and an oil that I use regularly. They're just there because as I said, we're moving. <laughs> so this is like the start of the shelves and as you can see, like the shelves were really full so I was using like every single little nook of space. So I have some guidebooks here. I have the Divine Feminine guidebook, the Star Child guidebook. I do have the Self Love tarot book there. I have the Goddess Oracle book, the Mother Peace tarot book. This is the only tarot book you'll ever need by Sky Alexander. I would definitely disagree with that. I'm not sure about Sky Alexander's books to be honest with you but I have it anyway. This is the guidebook for the Witch's Insurrection Tarot by Kit Snicket, Transformational Oracle of the Morrigan. This is Step by Step Tarot by Terry Donaldson. This is a good book. I think this may have been one of the first books I read but there are several books I'm not sure which one it was. The complete... So everything just fell over. <laughs> the medium white book of the Spirit Keepers Tarot that I had printed from Lulu. This is the guidebook for the Pythonic Tarot. This is Soul Retrieval by Sandra Ingerman. I've not read this yet, but I want to. This is something I'm really interested to read. The Moon Void guidebook. The Shapeshifter Tarot guidebook. Tarot and the Archetypal Journey by Sally Nichols. Up here I have Blake's Songs of Innocence and Experience, the Mary Al Tarot guidebook. I have The Book of Thoth by Alistair Crowley, Tarot 101 by Kim Huggins, The Tarot History, Symbolism and Divination by Robert M. Place, Your Tarot Court, Holistic Tarot by Benabel Wen, Learning the Tarot by Joan Bunning, 365 Tarot Spells by Sasha Graham. Up here I've got Eden Gray's Complete Guide to the Tarot, which I picked up recently. This is Awakening the Heroes Within by Carol S. Pearson. I studied this at university. 78 Degrees of Wisdom, Law of Attraction by Esther and Jerry Hicks. This just didn't really fit anywhere else. This is a journal that's like fallen down. It's like got moons and stars on it. Down here I have a, like a little grimoire which I write some workings in, but I haven't really used this in a while. I used to use it a few years ago. The Healing Night by Rubin R. Naaman, The Mindful Path to Self-Compassion, Witchcrafting, that's one of my favourite books by Phyllis Curat. This 
is Aradia, Gospel of the Witches by Charles Godfrey Leland. This is a really, really good piece of lore to read. Anyone interested in sort of traditional witchcraft, this is specifically Italian folk witchcraft. This is Circle of Stones, Journeys and Meditations for Modern Celts. Erin Rowan Laurie, this is a really, really nice book with some lovely meditations and such. Green Witchcraft, Folk, Magic, Fairy Law and Herbcraft by Anne Mora. Again, fantastic book, but does look at green witchcraft through a Wiccan lens. Fire Jewel, this is a devotional for Freya, some lovely like prayers and songs in there, it's a really really lovely book, I think self-published. This is Way of the Fairy Shaman by Flavia Kate Peters, that's a really really nice little book with tons and tons of information, it's beautiful. The Poetry Pharmacy by William Seacart, this is lovely, my mum bought me this. It's got like lots of different poems for different like feelings and emotions. This is Witch, A Magical Journey by Fiona Horn, this was one of the first books I ever read. Fiona Horn was like one of the first authors I ever read, to be honest. Again, Wiccan. The Stars Within You, A Modern Guide to Astrology. This is by Juliana McCarthy. Astrology for Beginners, Joanne Hamper. This is very, very basic, but actually a really, really good place to begin. I really enjoyed that book. Practical Candle Burning Rituals by Raymond Buckland. I love this book. Really kind of outdated, but fantastic information in there. The Pictorial Key to the Tarot by Arthur Edward Waite, of course. Charm Spells Formulas. This is by Ray Marlborough. It's falling apart because I did get it secondhand. I've read it a few times. It's a good book, definitely, to have. There's lots and lots of things to reference in there that I've gone back to. Working with Fairies by Anna Franklin. Cottage Witchery by Ellen Dugan. This is lovely for sort of hearth magic and witchcraft home magic. Northern Magic by Eldred Thornson. Honouring Your Ancestors by Mallory Vaduce. This is a guide to ancestral veneration. I bought this a couple of years ago and I've still not read it, so I want to read it before we move into Samhain. Condensed Chaos by Phil Hine. Margot Adler, Drawing Down the Moon. Gabrielle Roth, Sweat Your Prayers. And Maps to Ecstasy, both by Gabrielle Roth. This is all about the five rhythms, if anyone is aware of that practice. These are incredible books, really, really beautiful books. I would definitely recommend. The Complete Lenormand Oracle Handbook. I've not read that yet either. That's Caitlin Matthews. I picked that up at the beginning of this year because I was hoping to study Lenormand, but I've not got around to it yet. The Four Archetypes by Carl Gustav Jung, of course. Dream Dictionary. I don't tend to use this so much anymore, but when I was younger, I did. I had one, and I purchased this one more recently. But yeah, I don't tend to refer to it all that much. It's, but it's nice to have. Sigil Witchery by Laura Tempest Sakharov. This is a great book. This is not like the kind of chaos magic sigils particularly, but more sort of artistic intuitive sigils. It's a really nice book to read. Moonology by Yasmin Bullen. This is a great book for starting to work with the moon and learning about the moons in different signs. I have a few books that aren't here as well because I lent them to a friend. So I've got Moon Magic and Moon Spells by Diane Alquist, which I think are both fantastic books. So I lent them to my friend. I also lent A Spell in the Wild by Alice Tarbuck, my physical copy to a friend so she could read them, but that's where these were here. I also have Moon Magic by Rachel Patterson here. I love Rachel Patterson on YouTube, it's fantastic. This is The Sacred Round by Ellen Hawke, A Witch's Guide to Magical Practice. Psychic Witch by Matt Oren, one of my favourite books. This is just a fantastic book for beginners, intermediate practitioners, I think. Aromatherapy for Women, an old book that is just a classic and a favourite, and it's a book my mum had when I was growing up, so it's really been used a lot, and there's a lot of fantastic information in there if you're learning about aromatherapy. Earth Magic by Stephen D. Farmer, Ancient Shamanic Wisdom for Healing Yourself, Others and the Planet. Mysteries of the Dark Moon by Demetra George, really, really important book. Self-Worth Path by Lisa Papez. I was lucky enough to be one of Lisa's beta readers, so I got to read it before everyone else, and I was so, so thrilled to get a copy. The Wicker Handbook by Eileen Holland. Water Witchcraft by Anwen Avalon. This is a, such a beautiful book if you're interested in working with water in your practice. Love that book. Jambalaya by Louisa Tisch. I've not read this one, but it's the Natural Women's Handbook. It's quite a classic book and something that I picked up like wanting to learn more about diverse cultures and such personal charms and practice rituals so yeah this is one that I really really want to read soon Everyday Magic by Dorothy Morrison this is a lovely book I picked up this second hand it's got some fantastic little spells like how to find a car parking space which is really really amusing but definitely helpful Candle on the Crossroads by Orion Foxwood Path of the Christian Witch by Adelina St. Clair a little Book of Cat Magic by Deborah Blake. I picked that up when our cat passed away. Keeping Your Keys, Cindy Brennan. 
The Feeling is the Secret by Neville Goddard. This is fantastic. Tamed Wild Intention Journal. Oh, that's old. I think I ordered something from Tamed Wild. Aromatherapy, A Guide for Home Use. I think my mother-in-law gave me that book. And my mother-in-law bought me this. It's a beginner's guide to pendulum dowsing by Brenda Hunt because pendulum dowsing is something that she likes to do. Magic and the Law of Attraction by Lisa Chamberlain. I haven't purchased any other books by Lisa Chamberlain. I know that they're all over Amazon and I know there was that question like who is Lisa Chamberlain but actually I do believe that they are a practitioner so it is interesting. Cavalian by the Three Initiates. The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. The Mists of Avalon which is an old copy. Okay here we have Wicca. A Guide for the Solitary Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. I would really recommend anyone who's interested in witchcraft to read that, but you know, obviously it is Wiccan, so if you really don't want to read Wiccan stuff, then don't. This is one of the books that I read when I was first into witchcraft, The Real Witch's Handbook by Kate West. Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. This is fantastic and referred to a lot. Fairy Magic by Lucy Cavendish and Serene Connolly. This is a nice book, but they come at fairy magic from a very different perspective, both them so I do think it's a little bit odd in some places for that reason but it's still a lovely book. The Witch's Book of Power and The Witch's Book of Spirits by Devon Hunter. I still haven't read these and I really am itching to read these because I've heard they're incredible and I just really really want to read them. Glamour Magic. This is lovely and I never hear anyone talk about this book. This is a fantastic fantastic book. Really really enjoyed this. This is less about what you think it's going to be about. This isn't like about enchanting your makeup or anything like that. This is about like literally putting a plan in place to create revolution in your life the witchcraft revolution to get what you want it is literally about like a project a self project and there's lots of different steps and meditations and tasks to do along the way it's definitely like a path that you undertake and go on and it's a beautiful book I think this is Deborah Castellano witchcraft in England by Christina Hull I'm very interested to read that everyday psychic defense by Cassandra Easton this is a brilliant book I really really like this book there's lots and lots of different workings in here for all kinds of different needs and intentions and a definitely really really valuable book. Candle Burning Rituals, this is a great book by Marie Bruce, again more candle workings. Mary Magdalene Revealed, I haven't read this, this is by Megan Watterson, I have Megan's Divine Feminine Oracle, it's beautiful and I'm really interested in learning about Mary Magdalene so that's kind of on my list. Practical Prosperity Magic by Ellen Dugan, this is a lovely book as well, there's like lots and lots of spells and rituals and stuff in here to inform your money magic. Complete Book of Incense, Oils and Brews by Scott Cunningham. This is like a gold mine. I would absolutely recommend that anyone interested in working with oils and brews and stuff gets this as well as the Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. I actually think these two are potentially more valuable than this one, personally. The Witch and Every Woman. I picked this up because I really love Laurie Habit. This is Megan Watterson's Reveal, a sacred manual for getting spiritually naked. Protection Spells by Erin Murphy Hiscock. I picked this up from the works like years ago because it was just a couple of pounds and it's actually a really good book. I would say I don't think it's as good as Everyday Psychic Defense, but it's good. It's definitely one that's sort of easier to digest. You can just dip in and out. It's got some nice ideas. The Circle of Isis by Ellen Cannon-Reed. The Tarn Bocunia. This one's translated by Thomas Kinsella. So this is Irish folklore essentially and this features the Morrigan. So that's why I have that. I have these Collins gem guides up here that my mother-in-law passed on to me. It's wildflowers and trees and they're really, really beautiful and magical and lovely to sort of take out with you on walks and such. So I have The Kitchen Witch. This is a really lovely book by Soraya. A year-round witch's brew of seasonal recipes, lotions and potions for every pagan festival. So it's really nice to pull out different sabbats and such. House Witch and Green Witch by Erin Murphy Hiscock. Again, like really Instagrammable books. They are actually both really valuable, but I would say they are definitely beginner books. Like, nice place to start. I liked this one because it had some nice, like, gardening tips. And I've never been a natural gardener. My parents are gardeners. My husband's parents are gardeners. But when I was younger and I had that time, I was always baking so I would be like more hearty than green but I do work with a lot of herbs especially I've always worked with herbs in the kitchen like baking and cooking and such so I've always known a lot about those kinds of herbs and in more recent years I've been learning about other herbs like botanicals and flowers and stuff and so I am moving in this direction and since we bought our first house I think in 2010 or 2011 and then we moved to this house at the end of 2014 and now we're moving again to our third house since like becoming a home 
homeowner and having a bigger garden and stuff, it means more to me to be able to make a beautiful garden. So I want to spend more time in the garden and I think there are some lovely like gardening tips in there. This is The Witch's Book of Self Care by Erin Hiscock Murphy again. So I wouldn't really recommend these books, but because they are stocked at places like The Works and they are inexpensive, like I think I picked this one up from The Works as well because it was just a paperback and this one's paperback. This one I did pick up when it was first released and I don't think it was all that worth it because a lot of the things in here I was like oh well, I already do those sorts of things so I wouldn't say it was completely worth it but it's nice to have it looks pretty but I wouldn't say I'll necessarily hang on to these books forever this is one of my favorite books this is Power of the Witch by Laurie Cabot I love this book this is fantastic there's just so much in there uh, of value I just love Laurie's philosophy and the way that she writes and there's so much in there that I love so this is Cassandra Eason's Complete Guide to Fairies and Magical Beings again another fairy book this is light magic for dark times this was a really really lovely book Lisa Marie Bastille again though it's kind of an Instagram pretty book but there are some nice practices in there that are sort of more mindful The Magical Household by Scott Cunningham and David Harrington Empower Your Home with Love Protection Health and Happiness that's a nice book Astral Projection, Denning and Phillips, this is fantastic. So this is an out of body experience. This is an old, old book, but it's a really, really good book for astral projection if you're interested. This is up here, The Modern Man in Search for Soul by Carl Gustav Jung again. So this was a university text for me. By Blood, Bone and Blade, this is a tribute to the Morrigan. Again, this is like a self-published thing, I think, Bibliotheca Alexandria. Some really lovely rituals and such in there though. Again, it's kind of like the Freya one, but for the Morrigan. Wicker by Vivian Crowley, Witchcraft for Tomorrow by Doreen Valiente, another favourite of mine. This is just a classic and so good, even though, you know, Doreen Valiente comes from Wicker and I'm not Wiccan, it still is very resonant for me. Hedgewitch, I loved this book, A Guide to Solitary Witchcraft. I would say the first half is a little bit strange because it's letters to two of her protégés, but the second half of the book is more practical, more sort of hedge riding, and I think I got more value out of the second part of the book, but it's definitely worth a read. Again, though, it does have a Wiccan spin. So over here we have the Natural Remedy Bible. This is by Michael Tierra and John Luss. This was a secondhand book. It's full of herbal lore. The herb book, again, John Luss. Crooked Path up here by Keldon. This is a fantastic book. Love this book. Couldn't recommend it more for anyone who's interested in traditional witchcraft and starting from the very beginning. This is the very first book I ever read. This is Fiona Horn's Witching. It's out of print now. I picked out a secondhand copy for my daughter for when it's more appropriate. It's a handbook for teen witches. This is the very first book I had, so it's got so many like memories for me. So I picked this up when I was maybe like 12. And just looking through it, it like it makes me feel happy. It's gorgeous. So yeah, I love Fiona Horn, which is fantastic. I have the runes here. This is Lisa Pachelle. I haven't read this because I haven't studied the runes properly. I heard that this was a good book, but I know that there are more. I've not actually taken the time to sit down and study the runes properly. So when I do get around to it, I know there are some fantastic resources. So I am sort of waiting to get those. This is a Celtic devotional by Caitlin Matthews for Daily Prayers and Blessings. Sex Spells, Not Suitable for Work, The Magical Bath to Erotic Bliss. There are some lovely like little recipes and such in here. And it's a really like pretty book as well. And lots of like lore and history and such. Celtic Magic by DJ Conway. I think that the validity of some of the things that are in here have been debated upon. The Green Wiccan Spell Book. I got this from the Mystery Box from Hearth Witch. Spells and Psychic Powers. This is by Soraya again, the one who did the kitchen book. I got this second hand. I think maybe at like Totnes, I think, in Devon. There's some amazing things in there. Then I have Women Who Run With The Walls by Clarissa Pinkel Estes. Okay, so here I have, you can just see it, the Collins Photographic Key to the Trees of Britain and Northern Europe. This is fantastic for learning more about trees and it's like a field guide basically. I mean, I have so many books that are not witchy that are literally field guides and they have so much value in them. So I've got the big blue book, Buckland's Complete Book of Witchcraft. Again, Wicca, but Buckland obviously was from America. So it's taken the British element of it overseas. The Element Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells by Judica Illis. 
this is a really good book for learning about folklore and such and spells I wouldn't necessarily say you want to do any of the spells or all of the spells in here but you know some of them are really really nice I actually did do a little spell in here with my daughter once and it was like a happiness spell using lemon and orange it was really beautiful witchcraft and medicine this is like a really really interesting book about the history of witchcraft I can't even get it out encyclopedia of goddesses and Hennerins by Patricia Moynihan teen witch by Raven Wolf and to ride a silver broomstick by silver ravenwolf again also kind of contentious but yeah celtic plant magic here this is by john g hughes this is a really beautiful book there's actually like a section on like brewing your own beer in there a treasury of witchcraft by harry e weddick Planetary Magic by Denning and Phillips. This is a great tome. They have a collection of them, like the Magical Philosophy Collection. So this is book four. So in here I have the Voodoo Hoodoo Spellbook by Denise Alvarado. This is a really, really good read. Celtic Law and Spellcraft, The Dark Goddess by Stephanie Woodfield. I love this book. I know some people who work with Morrigan aren't a fan of Stephanie Woodfield's books, but I love them. This was a fantastic book to read about the Morrigan. I loved it. This is a smaller book by Stephanie Woodfield about other goddesses that includes the Morrigan in one of her aspects, I think, in the aspect of the Washer of the Ford, I think, and the Bave. Morrigan is included in here, but this one includes other goddesses as well, and it's just about rituals and sort of meditations with the goddess. Neil's Yard Remedies, so this is beauty and aromatherapy and recipes as well. I think this is one of the best crystal books. This is Love is in the Earth, a kaleidoscope of crystals. This is like an incredible book if you look at it. Just look at that picture on the front. It's beautiful. My mother-in-law gave me this. I think it's out of print. It's got like every single crystal you could ever think of. I have another like pretty Instagrammable crystal book that I gave to Rosalie to look at because she loves crystals. The Living Temple of Witchcraft by Christopher Penzak. The Witchcraft and Magical Spells by Cassandra Eason. Real Witches, Book of Spells and Rituals. Again, this is like one of the oldest books I had by Kate West. I read this when I was in my teens. The Craft, Witches Book of Shadows by Dorothy Morrison. Again, this was a book that I had in my teen years as well. Spirituality and Art Therapy, a book that I had at university. This is Yule, A Celebration of Light and Warmth. I picked this up secondhand because I don't think it's in print anymore. Dorothy Morrison, some lovely like crafts and stuff in there. Animal Magic by DJ Conway, The Art of Recognising and working with familiars. Sacred Woman by Queen Afua. I've not read this one. This is one I would really like to read though. A Guide to Healing the Feminine Body, Mind and Spirit. Hello, puss. Meow, meow. Oh, cat. You can't see if your tail is in the way. No. <laughs> Okay, sorry, there's a cat here, so you're just gonna have to make do. The Goddess Guide by Priestess Brandy or Set. Blackthorn's Botanical Magic, this is fantastic. A Green Witch's Guide to Essential Oils for Spellcraft, Ritual and Healing. The Hearth Witch's Compendium, I'd really recommend this to anyone who's interested in kitchen witchcraft, crafting their own beauty tonics or anything, or gardening, that kind of thing. I'd really recommend this book, it's great. I think Anna Franklin coined the phrase Hearth Witch as well, so. Cat, we really can't see it now. I'll just come over here. Okay, so I have Plant Law, Legends and Lyrics, which is an old forgotten books by Richard Focard. So this is old myths and legends and traditions around plants, fantastic resource. The Witch's Bible by Janet and Stuart Farah. I tried to read this when I was a teenager and got very, very overwhelmed. And I've read it since as an adult and I love it, even though there are some things in it that are challenging, but are not so great for this day and age, I think like that have not been phrased the best way, but I do think that this has value as a book and I am glad to have it in my collection. I just have some journals over here. These have like artwork of the Morrigan on them and this journal, had some other patterns on it and I just painted it. So I use this for intention setting sometimes. So this is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. I have one of his Becoming Supernatural or something like that. I have that on audiobook. Owen Weaving Word Wisdom by Erin Rowan Alari. This is a great book for learning about the Owen. This is an old journal of mine. This actually has my 2021 year spread. So I have that there so I can refer back to it, but I have to say I have neglected the last few months. I must apologize for that. The Druids by Peter Beresford Ellis. Me and White Supremacy by Leila F. Saad. 
Witchfinders by Malcolm Gaskill. I want to read this. This is a 17th century English tragedy. If you want to learn more about what I think of some books for traditional witchcraft, I recently posted a video about like my recommended books and this was in there at the end as one of the books that I want to read next. Herbs and Healing Plants of Britain and Europe. This is a great little field guide. Again, a Collins nature guide. Beautiful. I'm making a plan for our garden for the new house. I'm very excited about it because I'm picking out some beautiful plants. Grandma's Remedies by Cherry chapel this is lovely i have actually used this once or twice for like different like remedies and such colds and things middle pillar by israel regardi this has the lbrp in it in detail the book of candle magic by madame pamita versma menachem my grandmother's hands i've not read this one yet but it's one i really really would like to read this one is the path through the forest by julie white and graham k talboys we didn't finish over here i have a witch's journal this is like a really nice little like scrapbook thing i think we're they're really good for like beginners. A Celine Silverwind. So I think I might give this to Rosalie. It's charms, spells, and potions and enchantments. You can see it's kind of set up like a scrapbook. So I think it's like a really, really nice little book for young witches. Modern Witchcraft Spellbook by Sky Alexander. This is a nice starting off point, but I probably wouldn't recommend it to many people. Spell Weaving by Pamela Ball. The Real Witch's Kitchen. Again, Kate West, one of the old ones that I had when I was younger. Wicca, A Year and a Day by Timothy Roderick, 366 Days of Spiritual Practice in the Craft of the Wise. This is a collective works of Khalil Gabran. This is good for bibliomancy. I won a couple of books from Kim at Abundant Life Tarot. This is Essential Oils and Rim Therapy by Marlene Horton, PhD. And this is Meditation, Your Personal Guide by Jacqueline Towers. This is Mariah Carey's autobiography that I got last year for Christmas. I've not read it yet, but I love Mariah Carey, so I had to have this. The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. I think that's really witchy. I have the message version of the Bible here. This is by Eugene H. Peterson. I personally prefer the King James, but this is good for young people because it's written in modern language, so it's easier to understand. And the Psalms are in here as well. This is a good book, not for the faint of heart. Witchcraft Theory and Practice by Lida Angius. This is like Australian, I think. I have Fairy Craft by Emily Carding. This is a gorgeous book. Here I have A Journey Into Mindfulness. This has like got meditations and stuff that's lovely. And this is Cartomancy by Alessandro Bellini. This is like a way to learn Cartomancy essentially. And I believe this is the 1JJ Swiss deck on the front. I have a couple of books here that were given to me after my grandmother passed. And this is Common Prayers and Hymns. This is really, really old little book that my grandma had with her. There are the Psalms in here as well. So I often actually use this in Magical Workings. And this is another little book of grace that my grandma had with her, so I like this. My grandmother was a very devout Christian. So up here I have Treading the Mill by Nigel G. Pearson. I love this book. I talked about this in my traditional witchcraft video as well. Silent as the Trees, again, this is about Devon, Sheer Magic and Lore. Gemma Gary, amazing book. Celtic Tree Magic, Danu Forest, amazing book. I love, love, love this book for the Celtic Tree. Oh, um, Circle Round, this is beautiful. This is Starhawk, Diane Baker and Anne Hill. I refer to this every Sabbath. There's lovely stories in there that you can read to children. There's recipes and songs and such, it's beautiful. This, I have the printed out guidebook of stories from the Falakos Tarot which became available as a companion guide which was free to print out so I printed this out but it's just on A4 so I had to put it in a folder and this is the guidebook for Dame Darcy's Mermaid Tarot as well. Up here I have Mastering Witchcraft by Paul Hewson. This is another favourite of mine. Just a fantastic book. I learned so much from this book. I guess more of an occult approach to witchcraft and that was really, really a great read. Folk Witchcraft by Roger Jane Horn. I love that book. A Medium by Morningstar. I haven't read this one yet, but I picked it up on audiobook recently because it's actually, it was, I don't know if it is anymore, but it was free on Audible. So I picked that up. So I actually think I'll listen to it first. The only astrology book you'll ever need. Not true, <laughs> but this is a good book to start with. This is another tarot book, A Massive Tome by Richard Cavendish. Beautiful, beautiful book and fantastic for history. Grimoire of the Thorn-Blooded Witch. I've not read this yet, but this is again more like traditional witchcraft, but it's Italian witchcraft, Raven Grimassi. I have a thing about Italy. I au paired in Italy for a while and I've spent a lot of time on holidays in Italy and I have a thing about it. My mum is convinced she had past lives in Italy. So I am definitely looking to learn more about traditional witchcraft in Italy as well as British folk magic. Traditional Witchcraft, A Cornish Book of Ways by Gemma Gary, one of my favourite 
favourites for traditional witchcraft. Beautiful, beautiful book. So down here, I will just do a little shout out, not that she needs it, but this is a painting by my cousin. She is such a talented artist, her name's Karis. So I asked my parents to buy me one of her paintings for my birthday last year, and this is the one I picked, and it's just gorgeous. And she does bigger works as well, she also does portraits. This is obviously oil on canvas, and I love her work so much. I will try to remember to put a link to her stuff in my description box if you're interested in some original art from a artist in England. So over here, this is really dusty because these things have been up the top and I haven't dusted them yet, so do forgive me. This is a piece of wood that came from the beech tree that collapsed in the field and I was thinking about giving this back, but when I meditated with the tree, it indicated that I should keep this. So it is something that I'm keeping with me. This is a cocktail shaker. This was my grandfather's cocktail shaker. I don't actually use this to work with, but it's just a ancestral piece. It just didn't fit on the ancestor altar, but it's here. These are some old candle holders actually that have seen better days <laughs> and this is my vegan remo drum that i like to use in meditations this is like a bridge cross that went wrong <laughs> but it's still nice and it's lovely so i still have it there's a tag floating about my bedside table hopefully my bedside table won't look as messy as this in the new house but this is what it currently looks like so i have the book of the great queen here by morpheus ravenna because i refer to it it's got fantastic prayers and stuff for the morrigan but this is just the most beautiful book really comprehensive goes into all the lore and everything it's a Starhawk Spiral Dance because I'm working my way through it. Understanding Alistair Crowley's Sloth Tarot because I am working my throat way through it. I started this earlier in the year and I had a pause. Drew is Herbal, I picked this out for the Autumn Equinox to take a look at some of the correspondences again. That's why this is out. Tarot for Relationships because again, I started it and never finished it. And Alfred Douglas, The Tarot. This is an old book that I read years and years ago and started reading again. That's a piece of ink artwork that I thought reminded me of the Morrigan. Over here we have the Astro Moon Diary for 2022 because I actually needed it for work. <laughs> I needed it to be sure that I was putting all of the moon dates incorrectly. This is the Earth Pathways Diary for this year, so I've used this, it's been lovely. So the latest Witches Box, I received The Scent of Lemon and Rosemary by Rachel Henderson and Mythology for a Magical Life by Ember Grant and this is the Witches Book subscription. So I recently picked up A Deed Without a Name by Lee Morgan. This is one that I want to read next about traditional witchcraft. It's quite a thin book, so I think I'll be able to do that quickly. The Witch's Ointment by Thomas Hattis. I'm so interested in psychedelic magic and using sort of hallucinogenic herbs, so really, really interested in that. This is Letters from the Devil's Forest by Rabbit Arnson. This is huge, actually, and it contains a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So I think I will work through this slowly. Keys to Perception, I've still not read this yet and I've been dying to read it, like itching to read it. This is Evo Dominguez, really excited to get around to that. Some more books on astral projection that I've not read yet. This is by Dr. Douglas M. Baker and Projection of the Astral Body by Muldron and Carrington. I heard that these were good. Psychic Vampires, Protection from Energy, Predators and Parasites by Joe H. Slate. Again, this is on the to be read pile. Operative Witchcraft, Spellwork and Herbcraft in the British Isles by Nigel Pennock again on the to be read pile. Hellenistic Astrology by Chris Brennan. I have dipped into this but I have not got anywhere near finishing it so this is an ongoing tome. Tarot Correspondences by T. Susan Chang. I do refer to this so it's more of a like book that I dip in and out of but I really actually do want to get the newest book because I heard that that book is more like the podcasts with Emma Moline and I really really would like to have that as a book as well but this is fantastic to start with. Modern Magic by Donald Michael Craig. I have not delved into this, but as far as I'm aware, it's more based on ceremonial magics. The New Complete Astrologer. This was on eBay, I think. So I thought this looked really, really good to learn with. So these are some journals of mine, which I will probably just bring with me. Some dream journals and then like tarot and like active book of shadows or book of mirrors or grimoire, whatever you call them. They're probably book of shadows really because they are more scribbly than pretty. So I did say this was not going to be pretty, but yeah, these are some books I've already packed away because they were out and I didn't think I would need to use them straight away. Only Your Own Shadow by Robert A. Johnson. Moon Time by Lucy H. Pierce is beautiful. The Ultimate Guide to the Writer, Waite Smith Tarot. So this is the book that everyone referred to in Tarot Playdate if you were part of that. If you don't know what I'm talking about then don't worry about it. But J. 
Jen's Balanced Tarot essentially did a series going through all the cards and usually Simon or someone else would refer to this book because of all of the beautiful symbolism that they go into. But I have heard some speculation as to some of the symbolism in here and whether it is in fact made up. <laughs> but I mean it all seems to make sense from what I've read so far of whatever cards I've dipped into. It made sense. The Herbal Alchemist's Handbook. This was a witch's book subscription book. Wild Magic by Danu Forrest. Dream Spells by Claire Nahmed. This was on my bedside table because I literally would use this. This is the Anna Cortez book that I discussed in my last video with the Tarot and Oracle decks. So I haven't read this book yet because I want to finish the other one which is on Kindle which I don't do very well with Kindle so that's why. Some books that I picked up recently from Glastonbury This is Avalon Within by Jenna Telendrio. I've wanted to read this for years so it's on the list. Entering Hecate's Garden by Cindy Brennan. Again this was a witch's book bundle book. Over here I have Graham King's British Book of Spells and Charms. I love 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 this book. This goes into lots and lots of folk magic and charms like in ancient lore and stuff of British charms and spells basically. Again, this was a book from Glastonbury, Anna, Grandmother of Jesus. So basically, I haven't really read most of these books here. Some of them I've read, but some of them I have not. They are to be read. Rebel Witch by Kellyanne Maddox. I think I heard Candy Soul and Soil say that she was saving this for Christmas. I think I might do that because this is a book I really, really want to read, but it feels like a treat. So I think I might just leave it as my like holiday book. I think that could be fun. Little Book of Feng Shui. My mother-in-law bought me this for my birthday because we were talking about Feng Shui a lot. This is Urban Magic by Diana Rachel. Again, another witch's book subscription book. I love Paul Hewson's Mastering Witchcraft. So I picked this up, Mystical Origins of the Tarot. I've wanted to read this as well for a long, long time, but I didn't think I would get it for a long, long time as well. But I picked it up from Glastonbury Speaking Tree for eight pounds. Another book from the Speaking Tree was The Healing Power of Trees by Charlene Hidalgo. Charlene Hidalgo is the author of the deck that I have for the OM. I wanted to read this as well for years and it was just time to pick it up in Glastonbury. Wild Magical Soul by Monica Croson, Untame Your Spirit and Connect to Nature's Wisdom. The Compendium Maleficarum by Francesca Maria Gozzo. I picked this up not too long ago really because I wanted to delve into some of the interesting accounts, the trial accounts and records and such. And this is good because it goes into like examples as well as just the accusations. But it's, yeah, it's not light reading really and I've not read it cover to cover. I've dipped in and out. And this was a recent book as well. This is Cold Pepper's Complete Herbal. It kind of, I feel, rounds out my herbal book collection really nicely. I love this version as well because it's the illustrated version. Again, I got this from Glastonbury. I think I totally skipped past the complete peak tricks. I started dipping into this. I have not finished it. I think this will probably take me years to finish, to be honest. But this is the occult classic of astrological magic. I think the occult books, they tend to take me longer. They tend to be like heavier reading than the sort of more modern magic or other books that I've been dipping into reading. So yeah, it's probably gonna take me a bit longer. I don't think I'm gonna be leaving these books in this box, but they are there for now. So I haven't really packed anything. All I've done is share with you what I've got and made a mess basically. But I hope that you've enjoyed taking a little look into my bookshelves. Just one last peek. So yeah, it's messy in here, I know, and this wasn't exactly the most beautiful video that I wanted to share with you, but hopefully like when we're settled in our new house, I'll be able to share some more like sort of visually appealing videos with you, ones that aren't so chaotic and messy. But hopefully if you're interested in witchcraft, magic, spirituality, tarot, occult, then you have enjoyed some of this, seeing my bookshelves get torn apart. I really like things to be tidy and clean, so this is not like fun for me particularly, but I do love all of these books, so it's been really, really fun sharing them with you. I hope that you enjoyed seeing some of these books. If you did, let me know in the comments below if there are any of these books that you've read and loved, any of the books that I haven't read yet that you think I should read first, like that you think are really, really good if you've read them. Or if you've seen any books here that you like the sound of from what I've said about them or that you've never seen before and you've seen them on my shelf and you kind of fancy reading them too, let me know. I'd love to hear. That's really fun. If you did enjoy the video, please do like the video, give the video a thumbs up, share it with anyone who you think would be interested to see this book collection that is growing and I'm not getting to the bottom of the reading pile of. The reading pile is huge. Most of the ones on the shelf have been read but still the reading pile is huge. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, share it with anyone who you think will also enjoy it. And if you'd like to see more from me around tarot, witchcraft, magic, spirituality, then please do subscribe. And while you're subscribing, don't forget to click the little bell notification because that's how YouTube is going to let you know when I create and upload videos just like this. So with all that said, thank you again so much for joining me. I hope you stay well and safe. And I look forward to seeing you in another video really soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah. Well, how am I going to pack the books away?
you're in the suitcase, how can I pack the books away? <laughs> you gonna say goodbye? Are you gonna say goodbye? Say goodbye. <laughs>